I will go ahead and take a few minutes and let people join in. Yep, it looks like we've got people joining in. Very good. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenna Ochoa. I am in charge of tech partner marketing and webinar production here at Just Do Now. Uh, thanks for joining us. I am joining today from the lovely Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I'd love to know where everyone who is on the webinar is joining us from today. We'll, we'll get to our co-hosts in a minute and, and learn where they're joining us from. But if you guys want to, go ahead and share up in the chat where you are in the world, NYC, Cincinnati, Ohio, very cool. And then also guys, feel free to drop a link to your site or your store so we can see what kind of products you sell, what kind of business you guys got going. Seattle, Washington, oh, I'm jealous that you live there. San Antonio, good, some fellow Texans, that's awesome. Cool, keep it coming guys. And someone has dropped a link to their site that is called holycrap.com. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but we'll check it out here in a moment. That's pretty mm -hmm. funny. All right, guys, before we get started, I want to run through a couple of admin things. So runtime, we're, our goal is for around 30 to 45 minutes. We might run over that a little bit, but this is being recorded, so we will send it out. Use the chat to ask us questions during the presentation. So you can always type in your question in the chat or you can submit it via the Q&A feature. And we will take some time toward the end to answer those questions. This will be recorded, I already said that. If you're no noticing any technical difficulties, just let me know and we will try and correct that as soon as possible. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about Just You Know. For those of you who don't know what Just You Know is, or you might know us as probably a really awesome pop-up tool, we are that. And we have super robust targeting roles that makes us really great. But what you may not know is that we actually can serve almost every step of your funnel. And I know the Hawk guys are going to get into that today. But we'd like to for you to kind of see us more as an optimization suite of tools for you to use at every stage, not only just the lead acquisition or the pop-up stage. Um, we also integrate with over 95 ESPs and CRMs, so we're platform agnostic. It doesn't matter what e-commerce e platform you use, um, and we integrate with almost any email service provider. So for those of you that use us, you probably already know that, but for those of you who are newbies, that's a little bit about us. Now, Hawk, and I'll let uh, Jesse and G tell us a little bit more, but they are one of our partner, our agency partners here at Just You Know. And the cool thing that I really like about Hawk is that they have month to month contracts. So, you know, I always hear complaints about marketing agencies like, man, they're making us sign up for a super long contract. We don't want to commit because we don't know. So I think it's really great that you guys approach it from that model. And yeah, I guess you guys can tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, looks like we lost video on Jesse, but um, we can go ahead and meet the guys from Hawk. So joining us today are Gian, who I have been told I can just call G. So for the presentation, I will call you G and Jesse. So, hey guys, thanks for joining. Why don't you go ahead and let us know what you guys do at Hawk and a little bit about the company. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, so at Hawk, um, you know, kind of like uh, Jenna mentioned, we're a month to month um, digital marketing consultancy and we offer an a la carte menu of services. So the way I like to look at it is almost like a Walmart of sorts, right? It's like you need SEO, we got that in aisle 14. You need email, that's right by the checkout line. Um, under media buying department, you know, if you need reseller marketing, affiliate, paid search, paid social, you know, creative assets for your, you know, digital media campaigns, we can whip that up. Um, Jesse's department, they do a lot of trigger-based email marketing um, mm -hmm. and also looking into like SMS and chat bots and some more of that kind of retention marketing that involves a lot of automation sequencing. So um, I think one of the things that's really cool about, you know, our business model is that, you know, we kind of work with clients across a variety of industries and verticals and of all business sizes. You know, we've worked with enterprise level clients in the past, such as Proactive, TRX, Verizon, Red Bull, um, but we work with a lot of small, medium-sized businesses. Um, who have a dream, who have a vision or a great product, but just need to leverage our guidance, resources, connections, and, and ultimately the execution and thought leadership to kind of grow and help them kind of get to that next level um, so that we can kind of put them on the map and make them more of like a, a nationally recognized sort of brand. Um, so that's, I think, my favorite part of the job is that, you know, we get to work with clients and we really get to provide that roadmap and that strategy to help them achieve success in their, their ultimate like commerce dreams. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> it's not my Accurate. first rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> 
And and Jesse, what do you do at Hawk? So yeah, uh, kind of like what G was saying is uh, I'm I'm more specialized on the email marketing side and uh, more recently copywriting. So helping all of our clients that uh, work with us on the email marketing channel, um, just strengthening their copywriting efforts, not just on the uh, actual emails that we send out, but also like with Just Uno and, and email capture and pop-ups, um, just helping to make sure that the messaging matches, especially what G's department does with media buying yep. and making sure that the energy between the two, which is kind of what we're going to be talking about. I cool. think Jesse's not feeling this. He's a, he's a <laughs> poet. He's a poet. <laughs> Well, his official title is I have email copywriting expert. So <laughs> poet, maybe we should change it on that. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm super That's excited good. for this topic. And I know that our audience is as well because we get questions all the time about ads and copywriting, Jesse, I think is a huge pain point for many businesses speaking from personal experience here too. So I'm, I'm excited to learn along with you. Um, the presentation looks super thorough, so I think let's go ahead and get started. Before we get into the paid media, though, G, can one of you take a moment and talk to us about Snow Monkey? So today we're presenting about a mutual client that Just Uno and Hawk Media have, which is Snow Monkey. So can you tell us, you know, what they are, what do they do, and why did they come to Hawk? Yeah, definitely. So um, I've been working with the Snow Monkey team now uh, for about a year. They actually signed about almost exactly a year from I think last week and they are a, it's a vegan ice cream that uh, was really focused on um, just getting into as many grocery stores across the country and they came to us with the um, the goal of really expanding their first their grocery store presence but now it kind of shifted towards the end of last year to building their online presence. And that's not just their email list, but also their retargeting pools on Facebook and Instagram and just building out the whole tribe. Um, but yeah, it's, it started by these, these two awesome girls out of Boston University, like I believe four years ago, and um, just been crushing it ever since. And we've just helped augment what they've already got going because their, their product is really good. Uh, the, the vegan ice cream actually tastes good, which I was a little bit, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But, yeah. Uh, on trying it, I have become a fan. So uh, yeah. everybody, if you haven't tried it already, to definitely give it a go. Yeah, if you guys want to check out their site while we're in progress, it's snow-monkey.com, right? I think the URL is. But the photography looks awesome. It looks delicious. So I guess it also is lunchtime. But uh, <laughs> great. That sounds really good. I just dropped a message in the chat to see if anyone else had a brick and mortar. So share up if you do. Let us know because this can be super applicable to you. Um, even if you don't, we're going to go over some tactics that are applicable across online businesses only. So with that, G, I will let you get started with the paid media. I'm going to go ahead and turn our video off so everybody can focus on the presentation. And let me know if you guys can still see my screen, yeah? Perfect. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, like Jenna mentioned, I'm Gian. Um, you know, I'm the head of paid media over at Hawk. Um, so kind of our objective for Snow Monkey, um, well, I guess just to kind of rewind it a little bit, um, kind of like I mentioned in the beginning, you know, being a performance focused and DR sort of ad agency, we don't really do as much cold email outreach. You know, we found that it hasn't been super effective in driving outcomes um, or desired outcomes for the businesses that we service. A lot of what we do is trigger based. Um, so paid media was actually a big part of, um, you know, the success equation when it came to Snow Monkey, just because we knew that a lot of you know what we had to do to kind of drive towards our objective and achieve our goals was to really get qualified traffic to you know snow monkey site and paid media is a great way to acquire new users and also um you know with facebook and instagram in particular it's such a great discovery platform um the first being because it's very visual um you know with let's say google's display network you know you do have the capability to you know recreate advertisements and create a very visual and cool aesthetic to kind of drive discovery or to kind of get you know users who visit your site to revisit um, but a lot of times you know when you're scrolling down your news feed on Facebook and Instagram a really captivating picture can kind of generate that interest and kind of can kind of create desire and you know you can do really full funnel campaigns on paid media platforms and social media platforms but we really just thought uh, Facebook and Instagram with the resources that we had the objectives we had was just the best way to drive discovery um, the other part of it is that with Facebook and Instagram you know, because it is a very interruptive and top of funnel form of marketing, you do have a lot of control over who you're targeting in terms of audience and demographics, but then also devices. 
um, you know, with search based marketing, whether it's AdWords, whether it's Quora, you know, those are full funnel solutions, but not everyone is looking for vegan ice cream, mm -hmm. right? Or like, you know, vegan ice cream, brick and mortar, for example. And so we thought that to generate awareness for this brand and ultimately drive a uh, conversion, you know, we thought um, paid social and email would be just the best vehicle there. Um, can we, uh, can we go to the next slide here, Jen? Thank you. Um, so just, you know, to kind of rewind a little bit in terms of how paid media and email work together, um, kind of like I mentioned, you know, because we don't do cold email, a lot of what we rely on for top of funnel in this campaign is really just, um, you know, discovery and prospecting through Facebook and Instagram to drive awareness. Um, from the email side of things, we, we don't really do as much top of funnel there, but a lot of the metrics we're looking at there is engagement and ad posts, video view, these different proxies that signify intent. So a lot of this is cost per click and click through rate as well. Um, and just looking at metrics of the most engaged cohorts and audiences to kind of validate that we're reaching the right users. Um, as we kind of go through the mid funnel, uh, the second part of that is really creating stronger desires. So for us, it's driving new traffic to the site to engage with products and learn more. Um, from the email side of things, that's just a no pop-up. Mm -hmm. um, for us, one of the things that we really do consider an indicator of, of LTV and brand loyalty is when someone does actually submit their email for something, whether it's promotional, whether it's for a newsletter or content. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the reason why is because, um, as Jesse will tell you, I'm a very big sneakerhead. Um, I have a <laughs> lot. Of um, I love Air Jordan and Nike, but I've always been subscribed to their newsletter. I always want to hear about new collaborations they're doing, new product launches, um, new seasonal products, uh, bundles, discounts, et cetera. Um, and, and it's because I'm a lifetime customer, right? Is that sometimes I visit the site 10, 20 times in a month and I don't buy anything. And then three to four months later, I get a really cool email that's really informative that, that talks about you know, a new promotion they're having and I go back and convert. Um, that's brand loyalty to me. That, that's lifetime value just being extended and extended. On the other hand, you know, three weeks ago, I was buying a shovel. And I did go to a lot of different websites. I did my fair share of discovery and you know, a, com uh, a product comparison competitors analysis, um, but I never signed up for any of those emails, right? Because I'm not really brand loyal. That's just a one-off purchase of something that I need for utility, right? Um, so for us, like we really do look at that as a really, really good indicator of brand loyalty. So getting good cost per lead um, and getting a good lead conversion rate is something that we really, really looked at to kind of you know, assess the efficacy of some of our target audiences. And then finally, at the bottom of the funnel, um, you know, a lot of what we're looking at is outcomes, right? So for paid media, we're remarketing to site visitors and users who, you know, have signed up for that email pop-up or newsletter. Um, and the email side of this, we continue to nurture, sell, upsell, target, track, invest, and drive continued learnings from there. So more specifically, uh, next slide, please. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, big round of applause for Jenner, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hang with it. Thank you. Thank you. But here we go. Is, is, this is just a visual sort of a, a visualization of the funnel. So here's the different tools that we can use at each portion of the funnel. Um, like I mentioned, you'll see a lot of social media, a lot of paid media on that front for both AdWords, Facebook, Instagram, etc. A lot of those are full funnel solutions. And then kind of once we go down um, and we're not seeing just, you know, there, which is uh, the, my bad, <laughs> but you can see a lot of the different ESPs that are available kind of at the bottom of the funnel or the mid funnel to help nurture those leads and drive outcomes for your business. Um, so can we, uh, can we, yeah, yes, we can. I wanted to chime in really quick with a question. Um, we had Rodney asks, could you give some examples of what you use to increase desire and interest in the middle of the funnel? So I don't know if you want to touch on that quickly right now, or if you'd like to save that for later, G, but, um, if you want to save it for later, we can address that at the end. There's a, there's a lot of different strategies you can use to drive desire. One of the things that you can do is, you know, when people are in that kind of consideration phase, a lot of what they're doing is they're looking at competitor products. So one of the things that we found is things that are really informative, such as infographics that do comparisons on pricing, benefits, value propositions can be very helpful. Um, I've always found that for mid funnel and bottom funnel, a lot of times client testimonials or reviews can be a great form of content that just provides that social proof and third party validation. Other times it could just be testing different call to actions and really finding what works, right? Is creating desire by creating a sense of urgency. Maybe it's a time sensitive promotion or a limited 
limited sort of bundle offer. Uh, free shipping can be another one. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times clients can be, especially in the e-commerce realm, kind of uh, promo verse, and they really want to sell something at full price. And then I want to absorb the cost of shipping or just kind of, you know, make those margins a little more thin. So that's one of the things that I would do, you know, is that I would point out to more benefits and unique selling propositions or, or value props. Um, I would look at a competitor's analysis or product uh, competitor's analysis uh, through Instagrams and through messaging and through different sort of visual components and ad formats. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, again, I think social proof is always good. Um, just the other day, you know, I was thinking about getting a, a new shoe brand and then, you know, immediately <laughs> my uh, esteemed associate and trusted friend was like, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of ugly. And I was like, okay. <laughs> was like, on the other hand, this is a product and this is a brand that I really endorse that you probably haven't heard of. You should check it out. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, $100 later, uh, USPS <laughs> is on the way. To our <laughs> it was yeah. that easy, huh? <laughs> right. To Gian's point also, you'll see in, in, in some of the ads that are coming up in, in the future slides that uh, the social proofing aspect is a big part of what we did mm -hmm. with the advertising because we got a lot of great comments likes, shares, all that type of engagement that you see on Facebook. And that just adds a lot more credibility when you have such a top of funnel type of advertising platform, which Facebook and Instagram is predominantly. Um, and so seeing all that social proof, you know, it, that especially <laughs> with a newer brand that, that does help a lot with the, the trust and, um, you know, making sure that people feel comfortable with it. Yeah, and I will add on that point, I don't want to spend too much longer on this slide, but uh, like Gian was saying, you can test different types of offers. So right there in the middle of the funnel, Rodney, what I would suggest if you are a just Uno user, you can also A-B test different offers. Um, so to try to decide what converts better and then run those offers later. So we can talk a little bit more later about A-B testing if you have specific questions about that. But I would suggest doing that. We always, always suggest A-B testing for your own audience because you can't really judge 100% um, off of your competitor, for example. So mm -hmm. just make sure and do those tests on your own, audi on your own audience. Um, okay, Gian, back to you. Cool. So let's, let's uh, get back out of this macroscopic view and let's talk a little bit about Snow Monkey. So our first step in really understanding how we can get the best cost per lead and how we can really you know synergize our efforts with emails to develop personas so a lot of what we did is conduct audience research through um, facebook's audience insights tool um, a lot of it's looking at the analytics and understanding or looking at different sort of indicators or proxies that kind of help us develop a persona so for example if we see a lot of chrome safari users or a lot of ios users for me, a lot of what that can indicate is kind of, um, in some cases, like a premium user. That's something we can experiment with and test uh, within audiences. Um, iPhones, if you're not familiar, are a $600 upgrade, whereas many other sort of phone providers give you a free upgrade, even for a smartphone. So a lot of times, proxies, indicators, little things that we can look at to kind of drive, um, you know, some of our experimentation, audience development. On top of that, we plug into a variety of third-party external tools that give us insights into um, what publisher sites they visit, which can help with our audience targeting, um, and also like their location, other um, targeting elements such as that. And then the kind of second step is to kind of take each persona right now that we have listed and craft unique and personalized messages for each of these audiences and provide imagery that's relevant. Um, a good example of this that's maybe not related to Snow Monkey is that if I have a product that can work really well for anyone who's 25 to 65, you know, if I'm targeting an audience of 25 to 35 years old, there may be emojis, there may be content structures, there may be language and, you know, models and the imagery who are more catered to that sort of demographic in that age than someone who's 55, right? Sometimes I look at advertisements for products that I could use and brands that I would be attracted to, but the advertisement has maybe a 65 year old woman in it and there's just a bit of a message mismatch. There's not as much alignment there. Um, so that's kind of step one there, right, is you know, in terms of like experimentation, you really want to break out different cohorts, different audience segments, and come up with messages and imagery that's very relevant. Um, and then also conduct really, really, you know, uh, I want to say like craftful and measure measurable tests, right, is that you don't want to have six different ad formats with different messaging and images under each, you want to have some sort of controlled testing methodology. So maybe this is two videos, two GIFs, and maybe two carousel or static ad formats under each um, ad set with an AB variant for each um, with a message and image that's kind of suitable for each of these, um, you know, audiences. Yeah, that's a good uh, point there, Gian, because I feel like 
people who may be doing their own marketing or have limited marketing resources get easily overwhelmed with the Facebook interface because the ad interface is incredibly deep. So a lot of times when looking at setting up a couple of tests or like, okay, I don't know how many to do. So for somebody who just wants to set some like their first uh, audience up, that needs to be a little bit, a little bit more targeted than what, what they currently have going. Would you suggest like setting up just two different pieces of text or two different images or both? Like what's the easiest way to get started, do you think? I think the easiest way is to just, um, you know, come up with something simple, kind of like you mentioned, is that you want to simplify things as much as possible. Um, for me, I've always said um, media buying is a lot like the scientific theory, right? You just make an observation, you form a hypothesis, design a test, gather the data, and then form a conclusion. And that's kind of difficult to do when you have six different variables. I've always liked to say that it's easier to solve for X than X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. So I'd say the most simple way to do it is to maybe start with two different images um, and two different ad copy variants, right? So that way you have a total of four ad placements. And on a long timeline, as you're collecting data within a target audience, you'll look at your three KPMs of importance um, that matter most to your business and your objectives and outcomes. And it'll, there'll be a pretty clear winner, um, whether that's in conversion rate, click the rate, cost per click, or you know, just cost per lead or email capture, whatever it is really. But start simple for sure. Start simple because you don't wanna have 10 variables that you're trying to solve for because as you're analyzing the data, it's gonna be so difficult to form a conclusion, right? Right. Um, call to action, was it this message or was this image? Well, what are we comparing that against when everything's so different? Right, and you don't really know where to pinpoint it. Brian says there should be a warning, do not try this at home. I agree, Brian. <laughs> and Philip says we tried geofencing ads but didn't know what we were doing. So that's probably good advice uh, for you, Philip, is just to start simple. And today we're gonna talk about some geofencing stuff so you'll be able to learn and hopefully do it better next time. Cool, so yeah, we'll go ahead. Into specific measurements, you know, in terms of our objectives for the campaign, it's fairly simple, right? Um, at a high qualitative level, right? We want to serve the right ad to the right user at the right time, right? So this kind of ties back into our initial slide where I was saying, you know, really our initial goal is to develop the right personas and the right target audiences and make sure that we have messaging and visual aesthetics that are very appealing to them, right? Um, the outcome of all this, right, is to drive brand awareness. So a lot of the indicators that we look at there are cost per video views, ad recall lift, um, you know, engagement on ads, likes, shares, comments, et cetera. Traffic or, or an average watch time as well. Sorry about that. Um, you know, the longer someone engages with your video, typically they're more interested in it, but you know, that's not always the case. Um, traffic, so we look at that in terms of cost per click and click through rate. Um, email capture, oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, email capture, so for that, that's um, email conversion rate on, um, you know, the actual pop-up and then also the cost per email capture. And then ultimately conversion, so sales, store visits, right, is that um, at the end of the day, as much as we, you know, did get that synergy from just, you know, we did get incredible results in terms of cost per lead and, and email list growth, um, the ultimate objective of all these campaigns is, is commerce, right? Is that we do want to drive sales and customer loyalty. And kind of like I mentioned in the beginning, email subscription for us, um, for a lot of our e-commerce clients, um, you know, who have um, blogs, who have, um, you know, products that, you know, aren't necessarily a one-off purchase, right? Um, for us, you know, subscribing to an email or submitting an email at a pop-up is a really, really strong indicator of not just interest, but, you know, lifetime value and, and brand loyalty. Absolutely. And I wanted to echo that earlier too, but um, people are still today. I mean, lots of people say email is dead and blah, blah, blah. But at just, you know, we completely do not believe that. And people are still really, really protective of their email addresses. And um, going through this whole GDPR change at just, you know, has been a true uh, showcase of that too, because we've had a lot of people, you know, say, hey, you know, what are you doing with my, my email address and stuff like this? So email is very valuable. And if somebody gives it to you, you should take that as a, a strong sign of interest. Definitely. Definitely. So um, I think everyone here is just kind of on the slide. And so just kind of go through our three sort of core metrics that we um, use to kind of assess the success of our campaigns. You can kind of see them all there, um, you know, in terms of traffic. So the cost per click and the click through rate met, uh, metrics I mentioned earlier. Um, through a variety of testing and learning, we were able to optimize this campaign at $1.29 cost per click and over 2% click through rate, which we thought was really, really incredible for this sort of product and category. Um, what I think is the most impressive about this campaign is that 
you know, literally the cost per lead was $2.60 over the lifetime of this campaign. Um, you know, meaning at times it was below that, sometimes closer to a dollar. So to capture an email address at $2.60 um, really just kind of validates that we were reaching the user at the right time with the right message and call to action that obviously Jesse created, you know, a wonderful pop-up and, and, you know, wonderful engaging content on the email side of things um, or on the pop-up itself. Um, I think another thing that's kind of like a hidden sort of metric that, you know, we probably don't communicate as much, um, but is really important is, um, you know, aside from just ad relevance scores and aside from just looking at time on site, cost per email conversion, conversion rate and click through rate, we actually did get a lot of organic sort of post engagement on this, um, on our ads. Um, so we generated a thousand plus likes, 300 plus comments and 350 plus shares, which is always good. You always want to have some sort of engaging viral element to your ads because, you know, for me, I love when Facebook, uh, I get a Facebook notification, a friend tags me in, you know, a funny video or a product that's suitable for me, just because for your brand, that's really free advertising. You know, you're not paying for someone else to do that. Like it's an influencer. This is an organic influencer who's, you know, reaching out to a good friend who trusts them. It's, you know, kind of that social proof, that third party validation that we talked about earlier, but at no cost. Um, and I think kind of the big sort of, um, you know, final metric here is that throughout the lifetime of the campaign, we captured 800 plus new email addresses through Facebook ads. Um, the final important piece of this, and I guess the most um, common and probably effective way to kind of leverage your email list for paid media is really creating like matched audiences or look like audiences from the email list. Um, one of the things that we saw from both the click through and engagement and also um, a conversion standpoint from email and sales is that um, our top performing audiences were all audiences that, you know, we took from Jesse's email campaigns that he took from his pop-ups for people who subscribed and put them back into Facebook to match those source users or that source list with users who have the same characteristics and behaviors on Facebook. So um, obviously, you know, it's not just that we captured the emails, we drove sales, but that, you know, we're kind of creating that infrastructure. We're kind of building these scalable processes and campaigns that are going to drive future growth as well. So that was really nice to see. Yeah, and that piece is going to be super powerful. So we're going to transition and, and talk about the email piece, but I love talking about how you built these audiences to then use them as or create lookalike audiences off of them. Before we move to Jesse, we have a question from Katrina. She says, so with this particular post, um, I'm guessing she's referring to the one on the screen now. Did you start it as an organic post and created it into an ad once you had that organic engagement? No, so I think a lot of what our strategy is like, when we're at Hawk, a lot of things we do to try and generate social proof and understand the efficacy of an ad or an audience is to actually launch something for post engagement, like a campaign with that objective. One of the things that you can do is that if you see that you have really good engagement on an ad and a lot of positive engagement, a lot of likes, comments, and shares, you can actually take that ad ID and you can paste it into an ad set or a campaign that is optimized for conversions, whether that's add to carts, purchases, or email subscriptions. Um, and that way you're actually keeping that social proof. Major key. <laughs> yeah. So that's a common strategy we use when, you know, we don't have necessarily historical data. If we want to kind of just test the waters and see if, you know, an ad is very tasteful for reaching sort of the right, you know, just macro level audience. And so um, it started as a, as a paid one. Got it. Katrina, I hope that answers your question. Let us know if it did. Cool. Okay, Jesse, let's transition into the email section of this presentation. And I'm super excited to talk about this because this is obviously sort of where Just Uno comes in as well. So let's talk about how you guys grew their list. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, like I was saying, um, you know, they came to us uh, tail end of August last year, they had about 739 people on their list. And you can see there's just the not, not too much growth the first few months because that's when we were really focused, especially on the paid side of driving people in stores to some of the new locations that they had. And then uh, beginning of December is when we really started to switch that objective and, and focus on growing the list. So you can see from December on, we, we, went, on, we went ahead and uh, we four x it from December on, but from September, from when we first engaged, we 5X their entire list. And that 4,200 emails collected, that's, that's a screenshot, a recent screenshot from Just Uno um, all the way up until the end of June this year. So that's yeah, awesome. we've, uh, we've done a lot of really great work. And I mean, it, it, it was definitely not easy to begin with. <laughs> we didn't have much to, to really work with. A lot of the people that was on this list 
kind of to Gian's point with the, the lookalike audiences, they hadn't really purchased Snow Monkey, so it wasn't like the, the highest quality type of lookalike. It was just people who had subscribed and they weren't really sending too many emails, so they weren't really highly engaged. So that's why it was a little bit slower to begin with. Um, but it did help that going, going into December, we had new assets uh, for creative, creative side of uh, emails and, and our uh, paid advertising. And then um, we also expanded who we were talking to on the paid advertising side come December. So that helped mm -hmm. widen the net. We were able to you know, hone messaging, which we'll see in the next couple of slides with the, uh, the pop-ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can clearly see where you guys started to hit home with some targeted audiences. Uh, we have a question here from Chris. He says, were those emails collected all gathered by double opt-in? Uh, great question. Yeah, uh, we don't actually do double opt-in. Um, just, we just didn't feel like it was really necessary. I think sometimes it's, you know, people have different opinions about double opt-in sometimes, you know, because they're double opting in, they've got like a more of like a buy-in to, you know, continue reading the message because they've clicked twice essentially to hear from you. And, um, you know, when we first started working with SnowMonkey, they were using MailChimp as their email platform. And we, we since moved them to Klaviyo as if their list has grown and we wanted to do more advanced segmentation and integrations with Facebook. Um, so we've considered it, but uh, as you can see, like, like right here, having the zip code information was enough for us to determine that they were qualified and that they wanted to hear from us. So depending on what your form fields are, you can kind of use that as a proxy as well to gauge whether or not people want to hear from you. Yeah, that's a really good tip. I hadn't considered that before. So yeah, let's talk about this piece uh, using a, an Uno bar with a zip code. I love this. This is one of the features that we get super excited to talk about. Yeah, definitely. And um, this was one of the very first pop-ups that we created. And we didn't really want to have a, a very disruptive type of pop-up. So that's why we went with the Uno bar. Um, and when we first started, we, we, got, we just had the email address. And then it's like, hey, can Snow Monkey deliver to you? Find out. And we just had the email address. But when we added in the zip code, we wanted to use that because as Snow Monkey has expanded into more stores, on the email side, we wanted to retarget these people. And um, since moving them to Klaviyo, we could segment them out and talk to them again on Facebook as well with a retargeting campaign. So we'll have some examples of emails like that down the line. But um, yeah, this was really, really cool to see how um, over the span of, I believe this was about three months, three, three to four months that we ran this, this Uno bar, uh, we were able to capture 545 opt-ins and you know, it's, it's definitely going to have a lower opt-in rate from what we've seen just across all of our clients, the Uno bar, um, but it's less disruptive, and I think people can appreciate that. So um, we were satisfied with these results, for sure. Yeah, and for those of you guys who in the chat said you do have some physical brick-and-mortar locations, we actually had quite a few. Running something like this would greatly benefit you, and we're going to look at that here in a little bit looking at the emails and exactly how you set that up but basically this is helping you segment your list to further target those physical stores so even if you just have one if you have multiple if you're planning on launching a new one this is a really great strategy to just boost your promotion and make it much more personalized cool so let's look at this mobile pop-up i was really surprised by these um, stats because it seems like the one with more fields converted better. And I think Jesse's going to talk to us about why that is. Yeah, definitely. So uh, on the left hand side, this was the very first mobile Uno bar that we ran. Um, and this, so this was at the end of November, beginning of December of last year. And a couple of things I wanted to note is first and foremost, we did a, a mobile Uno bar as opposed to like a full screen takeover on mobile, partially because of Google's um, they kind of like penalize you in terms of SEO and ranking if you have a full screen pop-up on the very first page. And we wanted to try and capture as many people that were coming, especially from mobile. Um, I think 80% of our traffic is coming from mobile, just generally. And so um, with the mobile Uno bar, we can actually have that slide in within five to 10 seconds, which is what we had this timer based off of. And we can do that on the first page 
It's not as, not as invasive. And you can see like, well, hello there, join the kingdom and get 15% off. Very, you know, welcoming and it's not like too overbearing. Uh, and we, we had played around with different wording on the left-hand side. And um, that's how we kind of iterated to the right-hand side where the, the copy changed a bit. But uh, yeah, to your point, Jenna, I think it was really interesting. If you look at it from an email capture, um, what the opt-in rate is from the left to the right-hand side, we definitely saw a significant improvement, even though less opt-ins with our, uh, our, uh, our new pop-up, the one that we're running right now, which has an extra form field. But this was at the point where um, we had run the one on the left for about four months, uh, give or take maybe five months. And then we switched to the zip code field um, once that became a priority for us. And, you know, we had already refined our messaging, especially um, on the Facebook side of things and in Instagram, we, we just were able to test really quickly on, on those platforms and adjust our messaging and have that reflected on these pop-ups here. So that's why our opt-in rate was much, much higher on the right-hand side. Um, and we, even though we had an extra form for uh, form field for people to fill out mm -hmm. and that was kind of counterintuitive for us too, because, you know, you think like a zip code is kind of personal information, but people understood just from the headline, do you want it delivered to your door? It's like, actually, yeah, maybe I do. Right. <laughs> maybe I don't want to get out. <laughs> I don't want to stay in my pajamas and uh, just have, some, have this ice cream delivered. <laughs> That's why they call you the poet, because you realize that those two things sync, because you're right, it is kind of counter counterintuitive. And I think that also underlines the point in A-B testing your own audience too. So everybody thinks, ah, oh, the more fields, you know, the less chances people converting will run a test. I mean, this is a great example. We do have a couple of questions about this, Jesse, and one I'm going to save for the end at, at Q&A, but Keaton says, how many seconds into a visit do they display the pop-up on this particular one? Yeah, um, so it's within five seconds, and we, we had tested um, a little bit longer, and we, we noticed a drop-off in opt-ins when we did it past 10. Um, you know, you want to definitely take a look at your Google Analytics and what your time on site is. And actually what I want to start testing is actually even a little bit longer, even though the 10 seconds we saw a drop off, I definitely want to try like a 30 second one and just see how that, how that works. Because since we've built up our, um, our audience in our messaging on Facebook, and we've got a pretty good top of funnel rolling right now, I don't think we necessarily need to hammer the pop up right away. So mm -hmm. that's definitely are looking into testing down the road but yeah these ones are five second timers got it and um let's see who asked that question keaton keaton i just dropped an article a support article from just you know about mobile recommendations for google but basically just a, an easy takeaway is that if you do want to show something on mobile on the first page load we recommend that that pop-up be less than 30% of the screen. So a lot of people even go with the tab option, which Jesse, I don't know if you guys have experimented with that with, with Snow Monkey, but that could also be an option is in, inside of the just, you know, interface, you have an option to show a little tab that says you can customize the text, but basically you could say get off or whatever. And when they click that tab, then you can even show a full screen pop-up because Google sees that as user intent when they click that tab. So you're not gonna get penalized then for showing them a full size offer. So Keaton, that could be an option if you are running a mobile promo for you to consider. Uh, the second question on this was from Rodney. He says, does having the zip code along with the email increase the conversion rate of the buyer? In other words, do you think it makes them a higher converting buyer? Rodney, I think we just touched on this. It's kind of up to your audience and also your messaging and your product, right? So for this use case, it seems to make sense because as Jesse said, you know, the messaging basically conveys to you, hey, you can sit in your PJs and get ice cream delivered straight to you. So if you have a scenario where this kind of makes sense for you, then I would suggest testing it. But Jesse, I don't know if you have anything else to add. I think you already did a pretty good job of answering that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's essentially what I would say. But also um, a, a big thing with Snow Monkey is um, they're not as focused with online sales as most traditional e-commerce are because they have such a big play in stores. So even though if people weren't converting online, that, that wasn't the, the biggest objective overall. It was really to get these qualified leads as we determined with the zip code information so that we could then send them 
messaging when we uh, launched, uh, when they launched into new stores. So, um, and that's going to be, I think, in the next couple slides. But um, yeah, this slide, uh, this is one of our, our favorite pop-ups that we've, we've designed. Uh, this is a more recent pop-up. Um, this, so this is on desktop right here. And uh, our designer here at, at, at Hawk, uh, shout out to Lee. <laughs> uh, he is a whiz with uh, Photoshop and Illustrator and basically took the Snow Monkey logo and turned him into this cool character. It just brought him to life. And we've actually started to feature him uh, in a lot more emails. He's, we have him featured in our footer in the emails holding the Snow Monkey uh, ice cream cones. And we use him in, in a bunch of different various ways. So it's kind of like a fun way to bring it to life. And uh, I think the, the results kind of speak for themselves with this as well, where, you know, it's, it's, it keeps along with this jungle vibe, this tribe vibe that we've got with the green. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, our impression, our opt-in to impression ratio is crushing it with this one as well. Yeah, this is great. We're getting some comments. Dam Dami or Dami says this is a great pop-up. Brian says, I love the snow monkey character. I too love it. I was curious, uh, Jesse, if you could just talk to us a little bit. So we, we had a comment earlier from Brian, I believe it was, that says, hey, does snow monkey use just, you know, professional services? Because here at Just You Know, we do offer that. But it seems like, um, and I, I responded, no, that Hawk manages their Just You Know account. So what can you tell us? You don't have to go into great detail, but he creates the design in Photoshop. And then did you also suggest that he added the submit button afterward, right? Yeah. So like, we'll, we'll like kind of get the layout of where we want the, the form fields and the submit button to be in the designs. And then we'll just hide those. Um, we'll hide those in Photoshop once I uh, export the image and, and import it into Just Uno. Um, Typically, you have to shrink the file size. That's just like something to pay attention to because uh, there's a file size limit when you're importing images, especially as backgrounds on mm -hmm. the Just Uno pop up. And um, you also want to keep in mind the site speed and how, how that's going to affect it. So, the smaller the image size, definitely the better. Um, and there's, there's free things online that you can find to, to shrink the file size. But that's mm -hmm. basically what we did. And then we just overlaid um, the email here, zip code here, the submit button. And then the no thanks you can see in the bottom. That's I kind of opted for a, for a one a, something to for you to click basically. No thanks. I'd like to pay full price. Something that's kind of cheeky, which matches the brand voice. Um, and uh, yeah, so we did that after the fact after we imported that. Cool. Yeah. So those are really good tips. I mean, we get asked all the time about that, and the the main tip I can tell you there if you are doing stuff in Photoshop or designs on your own super important for you to build the submit button inside of just, you know, and don't try to design that because those two things often won't match up. And to Jesse's point, this opt out text is, uh, it's really popular these days, but it is actually pretty effective. So I do like this one too. No thanks. I like to pay full price that has that little kick of guilt in there, but we always try and say, suggest for people to make that you know, a little fun or something instead of just having a typical close button. And if you do have an offer running, that would also be a super easy A-B test for you to set up. So just have a normal offer with a close button and then duplicate that offer and then try some opt-out text and see how that performs. Cool. Let's talk about your email designs. Cool. Yeah. So this is kind of bringing everything full circle here with, you know, we've gotten people on the email list and, um, you know, we've got these folks, their, their zip code information. So the email on the far left, that's our store launch email where we're like the monkey has landed. Snow monkey, superfood ice treats are officially in stores near you. And so the objective with this email, just very, very simply is to let them know, hey, like we're, we're in stores near you. Um, we have a, uh, a zip code uh, or store locator on the site which that's the step one right there that, that walks them through that. And then step two, uh, depending on where they're launching, they ha uh, Snow Monkey has this program that lets them do in-store coupons. So buy one, get one free uh, is one of the offers that we've run. And um, that just takes them over to the site to then claim that. Um, and that, that's a plugin that we used and, and really it worked more with MailChimp. So that's why on the, on the right two, we've kind of shifted that a bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I think that this is like 
where having that information was really helpful because the one in the middle, for example, and the one on the far right, those are specific to uh, Texas and uh, the East Coast with market basket stores like in New England. So actually, the one on the far right is the first official monkey has landed, grab all the pints near you, and really wanted to highlight um, the New England aspect. That's why we have that map up there and the hero image. Um, and that's it's very close to home from where they launched. So that's why we have a little story in there. <laughs> We've got a really cute gif in there of Oprah. Yeah, I love this of Oprah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, uh, a similar call to action, though, to just double check. Even though we, we knew these, these folks were, were within like a 25-mile radius of uh, the New England um, stores that they were launching in, we just wanted to make sure that they went ahead and, and – went and uh, used the store locator as well. And I do have some data that from the Snow Monkey team that they did see a lift in uh, foot traffic and they saw more pints being sold at these stores after they were launched. So we did it a couple weeks after once they got like an initial um, understanding of how much demand there was for it. And um, yeah, they, they, they usually get a lot more uh, feedback on Instagram actually. Instagram is where hmm. They're getting a lot of feedback, especially through direct message. People just be sliding in those DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine too, does that, do you think that has to do with their target demo, Jesse? I think so, yeah. So a big, a big uh, <laughs> one of their biggest demos is uh, the millennial market. Mm -hmm. the one right behind that is uh, really moms who either are health conscious and like fitness oriented for themselves and or, and or uh, they, have, they have kids that uh, that have um, certain food allergies, and because yeah. because uh, Snow Monkey doesn't have any nut or dairy or anything like that, um, it's just a perfect way to kind of reward kids and let them eat ice cream all day every day. And not <laughs> yeah, that's huge. I actually noticed that when Gian was showing his um, the screenshots of the audiences created, that one of them was new moms or healthy moms or something like that. So myself being a new mom, I'm totally on that train and will spend whatever money I can <laughs> to buy, you know, healthy snacks or be able to in indulge in, in ice cream. So I totally understand that. We did have a couple questions, Jesse, about the tool for the coupon. Do you, can you name that tool? I know you said it worked better with MailChimp. Yeah, so they have a direct feed into MailChimp. Um, we're still working with them on a Klaviyo integration, but uh, it's called Cubles. So it's with a Q P L E S. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure what the costs were or anything like that. I think they're like a friend of one of the founders at Snow Monkey. So got it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, definitely worth taking a look. And um, with Klaviyo, I've actually reached out to them, and they have like native coupon. Uh, they have like a native coupon builder in there. So we're just verifying that we can use that to let people print it and, and show it in stores and redeem it in stores. But coupons okay. work um, for pretty much any store. So. Okay. So Johnny and Dan, I just dropped the link there. And um, Dami, we will, or Dami, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, we'll uh, address your question at the end at Q&A. Okay, so... Yeah, I wanted to, let me go back to Jesse's slide here. So looking at their email examples for the latter two, so this one here in HEB, you said that one was targeted toward Texas, and then we have one here in New England. Just to kind of step back, guys, this is why it's so important for you to start collecting personalized information, whatever that might be with geotargeting. Uh, this is the example we're using right now. Grabbing that zip code is going to enable you to segment your list for each of these emails. So for example, you might specify a radius that you want for Texas. And if all of those email addresses fit into that radius, hey, guess what? They're gonna get that email and they're gonna be excited because they know it's close to them and it's totally doable. So that's the importance of taking into consideration an extra step. So in just, you know, if you haven't taken that extra step yet, you can always do that in your advanced rules section. So you can actually just build a rule drag over in this case we're talking about zip code you can also do country country is a really popular one with us um, for example with free shipping so a lot of people don't want to offer free shipping outside of the u.s um, just because that's logistically a lot more challenging so you can always make sure and exclude certain countries or only show offers to for example the united states but here is where you would find that zip code 
portion. If you guys have questions about that, you can email me after the presentation and I can hook you up with one of our account managers. All right, let's talk about Uno bars and timers and strategy on these emails. Yeah, definitely. So this was a really fun uh, campaign that we ran for uh, the health and wellness holiday known as 420. And um, <laughs> yeah, so we typically when, when, so Snow Monkey has always been able to offer, we've only really ever offered a six pint uh, offer online to order online. And so we want to do something special, kind of tongue in cheek for this holiday. And um, it really started with what we wanted to communicate in the email and we just made up like a random, like you've got 42 hours to munch on this deal. Just, they, they really like the team. It's so much fun to work with them because the team just likes to come up with random things like that, where it's not necessarily, uh, you know, you don't see it in typical e-commerce where it's like you have three days or whatever, you know, this weekend, it's just random numbers and they like to spoof things like that. Um, so they were able to put together a four pint offer for 20 bucks and typically they they were about 750 each pint So this was a really good deal for four for 20 and what we did is we sent out the email uh, a couple days in advance and when people uh, When people went to the site desktop or mobile they were hit with the with that uh, these uno bars with the countdown timers and it was great because we had the coupon code, which it's also in the email as well, but exact same coupon code right there. So it was very easy for people to copy and paste that over. And you can see from the results, desktop mobile actually carried more than half of our conversions right there, which are just Uno conversions, just far, far, it, more than anything, we've seen the most conversions, I'd say, from our, our just Uno efforts once we matched it with our emails, um, just keep, keeping everything consistent. And um, yeah, we did a similar thing with National Ice Cream Day, which I kind of hint at right there, but uh, our emails converted very well. This was our best running campaign to date um, before just recently. That's National awesome. Day. Yeah, so this was a lot of fun. Yeah, and that's something I'm really glad that you shared those, well, that you're that confident in this piece because we at just, you know, have really been stressing the messaging factor. So the point in, and you guys spending a lot of time on your email design, your email copy. I mean, that's Jesse's entire job, so we know it's important. But uh, for those of you who are on limited marketing resources, we just want you to be able to take your time even further. So make sure that all that care you're investing in your email goes further. So here on this email on the very right, once these people click order now, you can see it says snow munchies in the email how great would it be to just reflect that code on site? And that is something definitely doable and just, you know, like Jesse said, just targeting those email visitors. I'll drop a link in the chat right now for those of you who are interested in how to use the UTM parameters, but that's an easy way for you to make sure that your user experience is a lot more fluid. And as Jesse said, he's, he's seen this campaign perform much better after they did that. So that's, that's really great to hear. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about timers. So some people use timers, some people don't. We get this question all the time, like does that make my offer convert better? The answer is it depends. <laughs> so again, this is one of the cases we really would encourage you guys to do an A-B test. Um, internally, we ran an A-B test for our own offer inside of just, you know, and proved that timers did not work for us. But again, we're, we're a different product. Uh, most of you guys probably are in the e-commerce space and things like that. So definitely suggest running a test, but would also encourage you to consider these for the upcoming holiday season. So Black Friday is upon us. And these are really great for like flash sales or any type of limited offer or just to increase urgency. So for those of you that are just, you know, users, you can find the timers in the plugin section in the design canvas. Once you click on the timer and click on that layer, we have a bunch of different design options if you don't like the typical one. And it looks like the one that Hawk used here is like this flipboard one. I really like that. You can choose uh, what color you want these things to be, choose to hide the labels and, and really customize each one quite a bit. So that's how you would do that. Sorry, Jesse, were you gonna add something in there? Uh, I, no, I think that was, that's oh, 
Okay, I thought I heard somebody trying to say something. Okay, cool. Well, guys, that wraps it up for today's presentation. I am super thankful to Hawk. I think the data that you all presented was, was really great, and it's the first time we've ever done a client case study. So thanks for getting thanks. Snow Monkey on board. Uh, the takeaways that we want you guys to have is, first, just to test and understand your audiences and demos that will engage with your brand. I think Gian really hit home on that. Use segmented email lists to develop lookalike audiences to increase conversion. To me, this seems like a crucial part of the Snow Monkey campaign because those lookalike performances really started to perform well for you guys. So for those of you attending today, if you have questions about lookalike or you don't know what that means, probably reach out to Hawk after this and see if you can get some clarifications of what's going on with your ad account. Uh, define what a qualified lead is for your business and refine to develop an engaged email list. Yes, I know that Hawk put that takeaway point in there, but I love that we want to make sure that the contacts you are that are opting into your offers stay engaged. And then the two things I want to encourage you are the last two bullets to implement one list segment today. So if you currently just have an offer running on your site and no segmentation on the back end inside your ESP or CRM, and I know we had a question about CRMs. We'll talk about that here in just a bit. Uh, I would encourage you to set one up today, even if it's just a simple one as a new visitor or not. That to me is a step in the right direction and you can get your feet wet on a really easy segmentation. And then the last one is build one offer targeting a UTM code today, whether that be targeting from your email or your ads. I dropped the support article in the chat on that for just, you know, but if you guys have questions about that, please reach out to me directly and I will set you up with an account manager to walk you through it, even if you'd like. Great. All right, so let's talk about offers. We have a couple of really cool offers for you guys that attended today. So Jesse or Gian, you guys wanna talk about what Hawk is going to provide? Yeah, sure. So I can, I can talk to this. Uh, so what we wanna do for you guys and really appreciate you guys, we've got about 58 of y'all that have, that have stuck through this. Uh, live. Um, wanted to help you guys with a free audit of how you guys are capturing your emails and uh, maybe even doing a little bit of a dive into your just your, your welcome automation, your email marketing. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to, to do that to the first three views, uh, viewers. Um, I think what we'll do is a little raffle actually. Um, we'll have you guys just comment and just say audit in the chat. And then uh, we'll pick three at random and uh, we'll follow up with you guys afterwards. Sounds good. Yeah, we had some people say choose me, but guys, please type audit because I'm going to save the chat transcript. <laughs> so go ahead and type in audit and those will be sent over to Hawk to kind of do a random raffle. So thanks guys for doing that. I think that is a really great offer. For Just Uno, we would love you guys to check out a free trial of Just Uno and we're going to do a 10% discount on any monthly plan with the code HAWK10. So if you're not a Just Uno user yet, you can always check out a free trial. Just go to our website, www.justuno.com and there is a free trial button there. If you are operating on an e-commerce platform, we recommend signing up through the App Store. So if you're a Shopify user, head to the App Store, BigCommerce, same thing. Uh, WooCommerce even, and then otherwise, if you're on any other platform, probably just head straight to the website and that's gonna be your best bet. But again, Hawk10 is the code that you would wanna use for any 10% off any monthly plan and that expires at the end of September, which it's almost September, not quite yet. Cool. Well, like Jesse said, thank you guys for sticking around. We do have quite a few people here. So let's open it up for some q and A. I I have a few that I wrote down during the presentation. So while we're answering these, if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and type those in and we will get to them. Alrighty, so let's kick it off. Okay, first of all, Keaton asked during Gian's presentation, he said, how do you track email capture on Facebook? Yeah, so a lot of it would just be um, taking a standard event, whether that's a lead or a complete registration, and putting either, um, you know, placing that snippet of code, um, that JavaScript code, either on a thank you page, so a different URL or a completely separate page, or into the button on the, um, you know, email submit of like a pop-up or on the footer of your site. Uh, so that's something where um, if you actually go into Facebook, you look at the Pixel Setup Guide, there's instructions that you can actually just... Um, 
or there's links and kind of resources, but you can all just also just send it to your developer. Um, they should be able to figure that out. Okay, Keaton, I hope that answers your question. Next, Amy asks, can you talk about CRMs? So I'm not sure who she wants to talk about this, but I can speak to it from Just Uno's perspective first, and then you guys can chat about it too if you'd like. But here at Just Uno, we do integrate with CRMs. So if you are not necessarily an e-commerce provider, I know that some CRMs actually do support e-commerce, Infusionsoft, for example. Um, we still integrate with those, those solutions. So I would be curious, Amy, what CRM you are using if you are, but we integrate the same. So we have the ability to push uh, any information you'd like to build custom fields, to create tags. So it really just depends which one you're talking about. I don't know if you can be, I'm trying pipe drive, she says. Okay, I'm not familiar with that CRM, but if you'd like to understand if that integrates with just, you know, you can email me directly afterwards and we can work it out for you. But I'm pretty confident that, that we would work that way. And Hawk guys, I don't know if you have experience in working with clients who use CRMs. I'm sure you probably do. Yeah. Um, so I've definitely worked with uh, clients that have used like a HubSpot type solution. We use mm -hmm. it here internally at Hawk. And I think Pipedrive is a similar type of sales oriented solution. So and, and to my understanding, just, you know, it does integrate with it. Um, the cool thing with CRMs is you, you definitely have a lot more nuanced information typically that you're collecting from people. So you can have a lot more targeted pop-ups and forms that, um, you know, move your prospect depending on where they are in your sales cycle, uh, whether they're a visitor, new visitor versus um, they've been to the site a few times and um, maybe they've, uh, you've, you've, they're, they're all obviously in your CRM. You can actually do different types of Uno bar type pop-ups. Um, if you have like a webinar, you can promote that or some type of a demo that you want to do. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with Just Uno once you have that information uh, plugged into your CRM. Yeah, it can get really complex, but that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, Amy, I hope that answers your question and good luck with Pipedrive. All right, Megan asks, is there Just Uno pop-up so they're being Snow Monkey? integrated with Klaviyo, why didn't MailChimp work? So I think you did say that they switched over, but can you speak to that a little bit? Are you comfortable talking about that? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay. So MailChimp, I think is just a great, it's a great solution for a lot of companies that are starting out. Um, I mean, they have like the free up to 2000 people on their email list, which is a great uh, thing to start with. Um, for us, we wanted to get a little bit more nuanced with our segmentation. So that was the biggest thing. Um, with uh, MailChimp, unless you're on their pro plan, you can't really do as much advanced segmentation that we were trying to do in terms of um, conditionals where it's like people are in this zip code and they have not opened an email in X days or that. Like they do very, very complicated type stuff. MailChimp was just not really able to do that at a price point that we were comfortable with, but Klaviyo was. And Klaviyo also has... Um, the other big thing with Klaviyo is you can actually split test your automations. So that's a big thing that MailChimp can't do. And we've got so many people going through our, our welcome series and our abandoned carts. And we weren't really able to split test our messaging in a very efficient way. We had to kind of pick and choose which, which things we wanted to do. And there's a lot of lag uh, between that. So switching over to, to Klaviyo, we're able to split test pretty much everything, automations and campaigns. So I hope that helps. Great. Yes. Uh, Megan, let us know if I answered your question, if you are still here. Additionally, I'm going to drop a link to a blog article. Megan says, yes, thank you. You are welcome. I'm going to drop a blog article to one of the more powerful features of the Just Uno and Klaviyo integration because they are one of our most powerful integrations. So I'd encourage you guys who are set up on Klaviyo to check it out. All right, next, Melanie asks, does Hawk Media have international clients or just USA? Um, we do both, I would say. Most of our clients, um, their operations are domestic. Uh, we have clients who are based in the US and advertise globally, and then we also have clients who, um, you know, who aren't necessarily based in the United States. But I would say for the most part, very heavy majority is in the United States. Mm -hmm. Cool. Melanie says, thank you. She is chatting in the Q&A portion. So you are welcome, Melanie. 
Okay, Rodney says, I noticed that you used mostly interest in your targeting. I'm assuming he's talking about the Facebook piece. Do you mix behaviors in or not? Oh, 100%. Um, what we've always found is that it's always good to have a collection of like custom audiences, interest audience, and behavioral audiences, and to start fairly broad. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, a lot of people want to do these very like, you know, complex or, you know, sexy sort of segmentations and feel like they really understand their customer or, you know, they take information from their core audience and they try and replicate that in Facebook. So for example, they'll do 25 to 34 in LA, New York, who are college educated, make this income and do all these things. And that can be really detrimental to some of your campaigns delivery because it is a CPM based platform. And so a lot of times when you shrink and shrink your audience, you know, you're not really delivering ads to necessarily the right users. Um, since it is kind of an algorithm machine learning I need a conversion in order to continue to deliver your spend. So I would say one of the recommendations I'd have is start with um, interests, behaviors, and custom audiences, and maybe do one level of segmentation. So interested in some sort of vertical or like maybe lifestyle publishers, and maybe include one demographic or behavioral filter um, to kind of keep it fairly broad. Um, and then segment and segment from there based on device, platform, placement, age, demographic information, et cetera. Um, but I think it's always best to start, you know, fairly big, kind of seeing where you're getting the engagement and conversion to kind of optimize as you go, just because a lot of times if you do a lot of combination targeting and you have these small audiences, you're kind of moving backwards with your learnings as opposed to forward. You know, you definitely want your performance and your insights and, and, and learnings to kind of progress as you move forward and not regress and have to take steps backward to kind of, you know, solve for things. So kind of like I mentioned with, um, you know, creative and messaging, you definitely want to minimize the number of variables when you have your initial test launch or campaign. Um, and that's especially true with the audience targeting. You know, it's better to solve for X and Y than A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right. I really loved that illustration that helps me visually understand what you need to do. So yeah. Rodney says, very good. Thank you. You're welcome, Rodney. You're welcome. Okay, guys, that was all of the questions I had submit. So I see that we had a ton of people request for audits. So guys, I will shoot those over to Hawk after the webinar and let them follow up with you. So they will be reaching out to you guys. Again, this is recorded. So I, I will be sending out the recording to all of you. And if you have any questions, you can see our emails up here on the screen. And I will also type mine here in the chat. But for those of you guys who are just, you know, users and have questions about anything we discussed today, let me know and I'll hook you up with your account manager. And then Gian and Jesse have been kind enough to offer up their emails if you guys do have questions for them to reach out to them directly. So guys, thanks so much for your time. I loved this case study. It was super informative and I hope all of you found it valuable. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all right. Bye, everybody.